like to think of myself as an explorer of food. Mixing up some spices, tossing in new textures, discovering new flavor combinations. Christopher Columbus, Marco Polo, John Cabot, and Amerigo Vespucci were all famous Italian explorers, making their discoveries of new worlds and new routes. Today, we salute Italy and discover our own take on a classic Italian dish. Potato gnocchi with roasted butternut squash, chopped walnuts, and herb brown butter. I'm Garrett Shack, and today, that's what we're cooking on the coast. Amigo, today we offer up an Italian favorite, potato gnocchi with roasted butternut squash, chopped walnuts, and herbed brown butter. Sound good? Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we want to do here is get our butternut squash roasting. It's going to take about 35 to 40 minutes in the oven, so we don't want to waste any time with that. Uh, I've diced some up already, but I just wanted to show you quickly how easy butternut squash is to work with and what a wonderful uh, fruit that this is. This is actually known as a fruit, technically, because it does contain seeds on the inside. So you can see sort of that it's got a really nice thin skin. And just with a nice sharp peeler, it's really simple to pull all that uh, skin off. And then you're not wasting too much of the, of the, uh, of the, the squash. I prefer this squash uh, over others simply because you get more bang for your buck in the grocery store. Again, you're not wasting too much on the peeling of it. So you're not paying for that peel that you're not going to eat. And also, as you'll see when I turn it around here, you'll see just how much meat to seed ratio there is. And that's one of those things that's always annoying. You open up a squash and you got this big hole and there's very little uh, meat to it. But this one, a little bit of seed and lots of edible meat. So I really like to use butternut squash. Beyond the fact that it has a wonderful sweet flavor. Okay, we need a spoon here just to dig out our seeds. We'll discard those and then we'll dice them up and get them in the oven. Got the oven set to about 350 degrees. And then we're just gonna do a little dice. I like to chop it separately. Look at that color. That color signifies that there's lots of carotenes in this, making it basically a power food. Nice little dice. We won't bore you with too much dicing here, but I just wanted to make sure that you saw just how easy it is to work with butternut squash and how nice you get, how nice a product you get at the end. Okay, a little bowl. And I'm just gonna get it all into the bowl here. Give it a little toss with some olive oil. Salt and pepper. Fancy little pepper mill here. There we go. Hey, bella, bella. Italians would be so proud of me right now, wouldn't they? There we go. And now a little bit of brown sugar. So we're just gonna add a touch of extra sweetness to these guys. And then we'll get it onto our sheet pan. And from there, we'll get right into the oven. Sprinkle it out nice and evenly. We want them to sort of all roast nicely together. If there's any that seem to be piled up on top of each other, flatten them down a little bit. And then, like I said, into a 350 degree oven, and we'll get started. Get started on our gnocchi. Now, I've pre-cooked some potatoes and they've sort of been cooling in the, uh, in the water bath here. Gnocchi is a, uh, it's actually known as sort of the primal pasta. So this is where pasta, uh, I guess, got its roots. Um, Today's pasta, obviously, like linguine, fettuccine, uh, all those fancy Italian words, um, derive sort of from this. So this is type of a uh, type of pasta. So uh, you see, I've left the skin on. That's really important. Grab one more potato out of there. It's okay if it breaks apart. That's not a huge deal. But we want to drain some of that moisture off. And then we're just going to pull it over here. And while they're still warm, peel that skin off. In restaurants in Italy, uh, gnocchi is often served on Thursdays. It seems to be Thursday is the uh, special day for gnocchi. So any menus you'll find, particularly in Rome, will always uh, have gnocchi as their house feature that day. So if you're traveling to Italy, make sure you're there on a Thursday because gnocchi is probably one of the best dishes I think uh, the Italians do. Alrighty. I'm just gonna put this, I'll cut it, I guess, and then put it into our ricer. We've got a Cuisinox ricer here. Spent a little bit extra on a good ricer because we're going to be actually squeezing these potatoes right through the ricer. And it'll be important to, uh, to have something that has a bit of stability to it so it doesn't get all wrecked on us when we squish it. We do want to use warm potatoes when we do this. 
not hot, so you can touch it, but not too, uh, not cold either, because then they won't rice properly. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna make our gnocchi right here on the bench. So I gotta clear a little bit of room, and we have flour. There's three main ingredients to gnocchi: flour, egg, and then our potato. We're gonna get the flour right out here onto our bench. This is just like they do it in Italy. You might find them sitting in the uh, you might find them sitting out in a, in, a, in an alleyway in Rome, sort of putting these on a bench. Then we're gonna get our potato. Now this is ricing. See on the bottom here? Can you see the holes? Watch as it comes out. So it kind of looks like little pieces of rice, doesn't it? Basically what this does is kind of makes mashed potatoes in a sense. So we don't get big lumps in our, uh, in our gnocchi. And we'll do it again here. There we go. So you see what I mean? Like I'm using quite a bit of force to squish all these potatoes through. So you want to use a good quality one like this Cuisinox one here. There. So that'll do for now. And then we're just going to want to start just incorporating these. So while they're still a little bit warm, start mixing them together lightly. Add more flour. This is a real touch and feel sort of, uh, sort of one. And then we'll crack our egg right into the middle of it. Go. Start mixing. Gently mix. We don't want to. We don't want to create too much. Uh, too much strength into the flour. We want this to be a nice fluffy dough. So gnocchi is essentially like little uh, little pillows. And when it all comes together, and once we've cooked them, that they look like little uh, little pillows. Little pillows of delicious Italian goodness. All right. So you can see it's coming together really nicely. We're gonna take our bench, just clean it off a little bit, just like that. We've got sort of a dough ball here. Start rolling with our hands. Set it aside. Coming together, rolling. Looking really good. Okay, now, we'll be back later in the show to pull together our potato gnocchi with roasted butternut squash, chopped walnuts, and herb brown butter. But first, right after the break, we're getting out of the studio. You'll want to stick around for that. location at one of the best Italian restaurants on the West Coast, Zambri's Restaurant, and I can't wait to get started with this one. Pete Zambri is one of my close friends and an amazing chef. Let's get back into the kitchen and see what he's cooking up for us. Hey Pete, how you doing buddy? Good, how are you Thanks for having us in your kitchen today. Thanks for coming in. What do you got for us? Uh, we're gonna make a quick pasta dish with local zucchinis, some ricotta cheese, some olives, Lemon, got nice, it. super simple, clean, super, fresh flavors. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds like, like, that sounds like what Zambri's all about, hey? That's that's what we do. We keep everything as simple as possible. So where do we start? We have uh, some local zucchinis here from Little Acres Farms from Emily, and uh, a box grater. Pretty simple. So what we do here? Let's uh, grate a bit of the zucchini. Try to get some of the color. So we'll have a little yellow and a little green. Just the best when all these fresh zucchinis are available, right? Hey? So, as you can see, we don't even have any heat on the pan right now. Yeah. Okay, let's boost it up a tiny bit. We're gonna season it. Salt, a little bit of pepper. Can't forget salt and pepper. As you can see, just a tiny bit of garlic. Not very much, I put maybe a, a third of a clove in. Nice. Now we're gonna give it some olive flavor and some chopped herbs. What we have here is a little bit of uh, parsley and rosemary. Okay. Nice. And then some calamatas. Are those calamatas or are These they... ones are niçoises. Niçoises, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's get uh, some liquid in the pan now. We'll go olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. I'm going to put a tiny bit of butter into it also. So, in essence, what we're doing right now is we're basically sweating down the vegetables and developing a little bit of flavor with the olives and the herbs. Yes, I can already smell the garlic and all that uh, fresh herbs coming and, out. Yeah, and the uh, reason you smell the garlic fantastic. again is because we use the microplane. It's gonna, it's gonna pretty much cook immediately. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here's my pasta water. Yep. Now, if you're partial to fish stock, like you can do this and you can put um, pieces of fish in it if you wanted, oh, or nice, you can put yeah. pancetta in it if you wanted, or prosciutto or anything like that. But in this instance, um, we just want to keep it vegetarian. Okay. Perfect. So let's get a little bit of water. In. Absolutely. So that's, that's basically the sauce of our dish that's right there. That's basically the sauce of the dish. Uh, there's one other ingredient that we're going to put in for now, and that is a little bit of ricotta cheese. 
All right. Okay. So is this is this your own recipe, or is this like a traditional Italian recipe that you might? Uh... Well, you know what? It is. Uh, it's a combination of. The last time I was in Italy, I saw somebody do something like this with the zucchini, but they um, they made a risotto with it. Oh, nice. So yeah, I great too. kind of like augmented it, and made it my own. So do you have a favorite pasta you would use with this? Or? This one I'm going to use tagliatelle. Okay. Can you say that again? Tagliatelle. Tagliatelle. It sounds so nice when you say it. So that's looking pretty good. I'm going to put a tiny bit more extra virgin olive oil in it. Okay. And we're just going to let that sit. Okay. Here we go. So let's heat up our pasta in our water. And so this takes no time at all, right? The well, pasta, like you yeah. said, is already pre-blanched, so it's you're just sort of heat. heating it up. That's all I'm doing. Okay. Smells delicious, Pete. As soon as the pasta hit it, just that extra out of heat really. Uh, so what we're gonna do is add a tiny bit more water. We'll bring that right up to the boil. And we're gonna toss, toss, toss a little bit. Let the starch and the pasta and the and and the sauce kind of like combine. Hugs the pasta a little bit better when you toss it, developing a little bit more of a gluten into the sauce. Now the magic of plating. So here we're gonna we're gonna plate up this dish for you. Pete, that just smells so incredible. Like the fragrance coming off of that dish, the fresh herbs, the ricotta, it smells delicious. Okay, we're gonna hit it with a few different things now. Tiny bit of lemon zest, make sure that your lemons are washed. Not too that's, much. That's a great tip though, washing the lemons. I don't think many people do, so. And some parmigiano. Oh, look at that. Almost dances on top of the pasta as it melts through. Eh? It's gorgeous. Inspiration it dances like our, like our dance moves. Eh? That looks fantastic. I was thinking more along the lines of ballet <laughs> rather than jamboree. Fair you know enough. I mean? Should we dig in? Do we have a bite? Yeah, let's go. So uh, here, why don't you have the first bite and I'll join you. Are you, are you a pasta twirler? Or? No. No? I'm a slurper. <laughs> nice. Eh? Perfect. Perfect. How many times did you get smacked upside the head from, uh, from grandma for slurping? No, no. Mm, mm -mm. That is incredible, Peter. Yeah, pretty simple. What did that take us? Five minutes, clean eight flavors. minutes? Yeah, absolutely. Those olives add that little brininess. We've got a nice seasoning in there. And the lemon just brightens everything right up. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to let Pete finish, uh, finish chewing his mouthful there, and we're going to head back into the studio. Pete, that was delicious, buddy. I'm not going to leave any of this for the camera, guys. Let's eat it up. Camera, guys. to the kitchen. We're working on potato gnocchi with roasted butternut squash, chopped walnuts, and herb brown butter. Things are coming together. You see I've rolled out the, uh, the gnocchi nicely here. Our butternut squash has come out of the oven. Lovely color. It smells so fragrant. It's uber sweet. Just a hint of that brown sugar just to add the sweetness to it, but it's, it's gorgeous. It's perfectly cooked. Now, something I want to do here. This is a little trick. You can buy a... Um, I don't know what you call it, like a, a gnocchi roller, I guess. And it's a wooden board that you would roll your gnocchi down into the, uh, into the pot before you cook it. Essentially what that does is creates these little grooves. And that, in fact, has a purpose. It's not just to look good. It's also to hold the sauce onto the gnocchi as you go. So we're going to do a version of that with a fork as we go here. And just give them a quick squish. And then with our pastry scraper, this little guy right here, we're gonna make our little pillows. There we go. Really simple, try to get uniform sizes, but it's not super important. Again, this is the primal pasta, right? It was the original sort of rustic pasta dish. And then just separate them a little bit. We don't want them sticking together. And into our pan over here, just gonna turn up the heat a little bit. You wanna make sure it's on a nice rolling boil or a rolling simmer, a little bit better than a simmer, but not quite fully boiling. Add a little salt, because we want it to taste good, right? There we are. And then we'll start adding our gnocchi. So don't overcrowd the pan. Again, if we drop the temperature of that, if we drop the temperature of that uh, simmering water, it'll just start to absorb water and they'll get all gloopy and kind of, uh, kind of yucky. We don't want that. Give it a whirl. 
we go. Got a fairly good wide pan here, so I can add a few more. Now I know at home you're going, oh, but how do I know when it's done? Is this like pasta, you throw it against the wall? No, not at all. The gnocchi will be done as it starts to float. So what I like to do, pops up to the top, I give it another 30 seconds to 45 seconds, uh, and then pull it out of the water. Just finish cutting these ones quickly. There we are. Okay. I'm just gonna clean up the rest of the bench before we get started on our brown butter sauce. So brown butter sauce is probably one of my favorite sauces of all time. I personally think it should be made into a cologne and you could just dab a little bit behind your ears because uh, it's that good. It smells amazing. It's got this nuttiness to it. It's just gorgeous. So brown butter, we need butter. Now we don't need a ton of it, but we probably will need about, a, well, that's probably too much. Let's say about a little bit less than a quarter of a cup. We'll get that right into our pan. I'm gonna take a little bit extra out there. Heart smart today. Give our gnocchis a little stir. So what we're going to do here is literally, as it sounds, brown butter. We're gonna actually take this butter and brown it lightly. So the milk fats, the milk solids rather, in the butter will actually start to caramelize a little bit and you'll get this wonderful nutty aroma. So today's dish has walnuts. Walnuts, really, really interesting uh, tree, tree uh, fruit, or is it a fruit? Tree nut. It's actually known to be one of the first harvested nuts uh, about 10,000 BC is when they first discovered these guys. So they've been around for a long time. We wanna get them into the pan fairly early because we want to get a little bit of a roast on them as well. And certainly before our butter goes to black butter, which is never good. Hear that sizzling sound, music to our ears. We also have some sage here. So this is gonna be the herb component of our dish. We're gonna get that in there fairly early as well. I'm just, again, super rustic. We've got these beautiful little pillows, little dumplings, gnocchi, pronounced gnocchi, but uh, whenever you see it on a restaurant menu, it tends to not get ordered that much because people go, I don't know how to pronounce it. So they, they point to it going, I'll have that dish. But it's, uh, if you break it down, gnocchi. And then nobody will really laugh at you. So it's starting to sizzle, that's great. Definitely don't be shy. Let's pack quite a bit of sage in there. The smells here already are incredible. Just love this sauce. So quick and simple to do, and your guests will just, it'll just blow your guests away. Now we're using salted butter, so we don't have to add too much salt at this stage. We will add some fresh cracked pepper. See how it's starting to bubble? Those bubbles are gonna change as we go here, and they'll become slightly different. But we can see the browning is already starting to, uh, starting to happen. So that's a good sign, means we're on the right track. What's happening in my uh, gnocchi pot? Just like I said, they're starting to come to the top. I'm gonna leave them another 30 seconds and then I'm gonna blot them out on this paper towel right here before I add them to our sauce. Okay, see how it's turning brown up top here? It's exactly what we want. Look at that. Oh, smells incredible. Sage, brown butter, walnuts. I just, yeah, this is my favorite by far. Okay, getting nice and brown. Well, now, how do we stop the cooking? Because this gorgeous pan right here is gonna continue keeping the heat. We're gonna squeeze some lemon juice in there and turn off our heat. Perfect, caught the seeds. My natural strainer. Not too much, it's not a lemon sauce. Turn that off now. And then we'll add our butternut squash and pull our gnocchi out. So butternut squash into the pan. About half of that for this, uh, this portion here. Get some of our gnocchi off. Now, the reason I'm setting it over here is just to dry it off a little bit. I don't wanna add that that poaching water into our, uh, into our dish here. They need to invent smell-o-vision for this stuff because it just smells amazing. Nutty, lemony, that, that herbaceousness from the sage. Okay, we've let them dry just a touch. I'll give this another toss. We'll get the gnocchi into the pan just to sort of coat it all as well. And then over to our plate. There we go. At this stage, everything's cooked nicely together. Look at those colors. Jeez, that just screams, it screams fall to me. Beautiful. Okay, and then we'll get it right into our presentation plate here. Just scoop these right down in the middle.
This would probably, right there, is probably enough for a main course portion if you were serving it just to one person. You could continue filling up the plan and use it as an appetizer, that'd be great too. I'm just gonna sprinkle a touch of salt on it. Another little bit of black pepper. And then I just wanna get a little, we're gonna get a little bit of that sauce from the bottom here. So we don't wanna waste any of that gorgeous brown butter cologne down there. This is the, this is the piece that brings the whole dish together is this brown butter. No. Okay, lovely piece of sage. And there you have it, potato gnocchi with roasted butternut squash, chopped walnuts, and herb brown butter. I can't wait, sorry, I gotta try some of this. Mmm, bella, bella, bella. Now what better way to enjoy our Italian cuisine than with the right beverage? We're kicking wine right out of Italy, and we're here with Chloe from Townside Brewing. Chloe, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm fantastic. So exciting stuff coming out of Powell River. Yes, absolutely. We have the only Belgian brewmaster west of Quebec, and he is brewing up some great stuff. Very and it's exciting. interesting that you make that comment about wine, actually, because we at Townsite definitely believe that beer is a much better pair uh, for food than wine. Well, with I'd be that. lying if I didn't agree with you, to be honest. I'm <laughs> Bit of a beer fan myself, uh, some people might know. So here that we have delicious. Cedric's Belgian Double. It is 8% alcohol. He hand makes uh, 60 kilograms of rock candy sugar for every batch. And he adds a little star anise at the end, just for a little spicy kick. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. You really get that. Mm -hmm. And you get the caramel flavor. That's really gorgeous. I love the color. Yeah, prunes, raisins, caramel. Let's see how it stacks up to the yeah, old uh, herb brown butter here. So you get a little bit of everything and dip into that sauce. Let the taste. Delicious. Mm -hmm. I think that the complexity of this beer really stands up to the sort of more mellow, sweet uh, flavors in the dish. Mm -hmm. And the, the spiciness of the beer is very nice with the herbed butter as well. I always love doing that, the taste comparisons when you have it, you know, the flavor still in your mouth and seeing mm -hmm. what, how it changes the flavors of the, the layers. Of what you're drinking. Yeah, it's Absolutely. fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Delicious beer, paired with delicious food. I think we've got a match made in heaven what here, What better could you do? <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Check out our website where you'll find more information on today's show and maybe a few surprises. I'm Garrett Shack. Thanks for watching. And don't forget, savor the flavor.